This video is going to cover how we are going to be glazing our plates, which we made in a previous video, and they are now bisque fired. Um, I'm going to show the application of underglazes, which will be in the grooves, and then the application of the cone five, cone six stoneware glazes, which are on the upper parts. Before beginning to glaze your piece, you want to always quickly rinse it under running water. It will get off debris, dust, and other things that could be a problem with your glaze. I keep bottles of underglazes that are ready to go up on my desk. The underglazes um, are the dark colors that will work well with stoneware. Uh, not all of the underglazes that I have will go to the cone 5, cone 6 temperature. So the ones that I have already in the squeeze bottles ready to go are the black, brown, green, violet, and blue. Now don't be fooled if you see a little purple tip. That plastic is just purple, but look at the bottle itself to understand what the glaze is. On a previous day, I rinsed my plates and they are dry. Now you will notice that one of them actually has a little bit of yellow discoloration. Don't be worried about that. If you see yellow discoloration, that is a normal thing that happens quite often with our water and our clay bodies here at school. Um, it will dry and uh, when it fires and you have glaze on it, you will never see any yellow discoloration. Now, I'm going to be using a black underglaze for this because I like the black underglaze for the colors that I've chosen. I think it's going to work best because it's nice and neutral. There is a little wire that's in the tip of each of these. I use memory wire, which is from like a, a memory wire bracelet type of a thing um, because I find that it's a wire that will fit in the tip of my bottle and it won't corrode. Now, when the underglazes are stored on my desk, after a while, they might get a little water on top. So I usually do people uh, tell people to shake it up before you start applying. Now, we only want to get the underglaze in the grooves. So as I put it on, I'm just going to kind of run it around the grooves. And occasionally, I will get uh, a spot where I go out of the grooves, it goes over. Don't worry about that until the very end of the underglaze application process. I will clean it off. And again, the purpose of the underglazes. Underglazes themselves do not run, and the purpose is to keep the cone six glazes separate so they don't run together. It's like a little channel or a moat, if you will, between the glaze colors, and uh, it adds a nice separation, a visual separation too, almost like a stained glass window, like the lead in a stained glass window. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this all the way around in the grooves, and then I'll show you what to do after that. Once you're finished applying the underglazes, then do put the wire back in and you can return the underglaze bottle up to uh, the area where I'm keeping them, whether it's on my desk or on the sink. And now this looks quite messy, but I can easily remedy that by cleaning it over at the sink. All right, now that I have uh, applied the underglaze, I'm just going to take a, a wet sponge that I've squeezed out and I'm going to sponge off the uh, parts where maybe I went out of the lines a little bit. And I even see a spot where I missed it entirely, so I'll have to go back in there and get that a little bit better. Now, you will find that if you didn't do your grooves quite deep enough, or if you, if you didn't even clean your grooves very much, you will uh, find this part a little bit trickier. So um, hopefully you'll just make them a little bit cleaner in, uh, the next time. You don't want the sponge to catch on any rough edges, of course, this is all smooth. But I did miss a little spot, so I'm gonna fix that. That looks okay. If you have a little bit of smearing, a little bit won't really matter because your glaze will cover it up. If you have a lot of smearing that is embedded into your clay and you can't quite get it up, uh, you may have to make sure that you use an opaque glaze and not a transparent glaze. When I do put the glaze in there, I do try to fill up the groove enough so it's trying to go up the edges. If I see a spot where maybe it hasn't gone up the edge very much, like it's just sitting in the bottom, I'll add just a little bit more of the underglaze. Um, again, I usually allow it to dry a little bit before I end up by wiping it. 
After you've rinsed your plate, then you want to select your glazes that you would like to use. Now keep in mind that the stoner glazes in my classroom are to the right um, where the under glazes stop. Uh, when you look at the glazes on the back shelf, if they do not have a hanging tile, don't use them. Some of them are specific for certain clay bodies. And uh, there are also the ones that are under the wear boards. Now, when you select your glaze, each of them does have a tile and it shows you exactly what it's gonna look like. So like Dusty Rose will look like this and each of the tiles are going to be marked. Uh, the ones that are marked um, and they're made of a little cylinder, those are the coyote glazes that are in my big buckets. Uh, the ones that have just the little flat hanging tiles, those are just the brushable ones that are just in the pints. Um, and I have a few different brands of those. You can use any of them that are going to be food safe. If it's not food safe, and I have a couple of them, they are clearly marked where it says, not food safe. So don't use that on a plate or something that could potentially come into contact with food. And the other four that you have to pay attention to are the four in the Archie's Base Series. They all have an indicator and a caution on the, on the uh, jar. And they even have like a little label that tells you, stop, don't use it by itself. These are beautiful glazes, but they do shiver if they're used in certain applications. And I'll go over that more in another video. Um, just don't use them by themselves. You can layer it over another glaze on these plates and it should be fine. Like put a, a glaze that's close to it. Like you could put Archie Space over white or blue purple over sapphire or something like that. Gunmetal could go over um, uh, desert sage. Red gold could go over chino. And you would, you would uh, get a very close look. You'll find the bulb syringes located in the big Rubbermaid bin. When you get it out, um, it should be clean and you know just check it to make sure that there's nothing in there. And of course, when you return it, you would be cleaning it and I'll go over that in a little bit. When you are selecting brushes to brush a glaze on, you can use any of the fluffy brushes that are back here. Uh, do pay attention, if someone has done something uh, inconsiderate, like if they've left the clay bin brushes back here, do not use these. Remember that the clay bin, bin brushes are not appropriate for glaze. They're very stiff bristled brushes. You always want the brushes that are the soft fluffy brushes that are back here. Um, don't uh, get them confused with the wax brushes, of course, which are in the wax holder. The wax brushes, we just reserve strictly for wax and applying to the bottom of a pot if we're dipping. After you've applied the underglaze, then you're going to uh, use one of the cone six glazes at a time. I usually tell people, don't get out all of the glazes that you need at once, just get one at a time and you'll use it, put it back and get another one. Now, this one is uh, sapphire and it turns out to be a really pretty blue. This is one of the Coyote Celadons and it is a transparent kind of effect. It's a very pretty one on texture. Um, always stir your glaze up all the way down in the bottom make sure that it's evenly distributed sometimes it gets a little bit thicker and it settles in the bottom so you want to make sure that it looks even all the way around that you don't have any clumpy qualities to it now when you are when you are applying your glaze you have two choices really for these plates you can use a brush to apply it but the disadvantage with a brush is all these small little areas now i do have little baby brushes that you can use if you if you prefer the brush but I have another technique that I want to show you, and that is the bulb syringe. This is a slip trailer that we use for trailing if we are doing um, three-dimensional slip trailing and we want it to, to kind of stick up. But you can also use this as a glaze uh, slip, as a glaze applicator. So with your glaze properly mixed, okay, and it's evenly distributed, then you can fill it by squeezing out the air inserting the tip in and then releasing. And as you release, it kind of sucks up the glaze inside of it. Then I'm gonna turn it over, kind of shake it, allow the glaze to go down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna squeeze it again to get out a little bit more of the air just until I think that all the air's out. There we go. And then I'll put it back over and I'll get some more glaze up inside of that. Now this is full of glaze. It's better to use it when it's a little bit more full of glaze. If it's uh, half empty, you sometimes get air 
that will blow out and it will kind of spurt across your your uh, plate or whatever it is that you're glazing. Now the tips for this, these are um, like the tips that you use to inflate a ball. In fact, that's what I buy when I need replacement ones. I buy those ball inflator tips, but they have a hole on the side, so I just literally grind the tip down with my grinder to get the, the side hole off. Now, although it has little, it looks like threads, these are held in purely by friction. So when you put it in, try to be careful not to push it all the way in. If you do accidentally push it all the way in, let me know. I have a pair of pliers to get it out, and um, uh, it, it we can wash it off and put it back in. Oh, and I did not mention, but I wiped the glaze off the exterior. Now that I have my bulb syringe full, I can go ahead and start my application process. And remember, this is one of two application processes that you can use. So I place my tip of my bulb syringe in the area where I want to glaze, and I just gently squeeze, and I pull the glaze across. So it's somewhat similar to drawing. So again, I put the tip of it on, just shy to the inside of the, the carved line, squeeze, and then pull it across. So the idea is, is that you're squeezing and pulling the glaze across to get it even. Um, if you're not squeezing the whole time, you could end up with thin spots of glaze, which you don't want thin spots, you want it to look even. If you accidentally get glaze in the black grooves, um, don't worry about it, we'll wait at the very end, we will chip that out. Um, the one thing that you don't want to do, you don't want to make a mistake and think, oh, I got it in the, in the groove, I'll just put more black underglaze over it. That makes kind of a smeary mess. So we'll wait until the very end when we're done with the application process and anything that's in the grooves, we'll use a needle tool and just kind of chip it out, chip out the dry stuff. Okay, when you are done with a glaze, then you need to pour all the glaze back into the container, kind of shake it out, make sure that you don't waste any, we don't wanna, we don't wanna wash out, lose any more than necessary. Glaze is pretty expensive. Okay, now that I've emptied that out, we're ready to go to the sink and we're going to wash this out. This has to get washed thoroughly between every colors and then again, at the end of the bell when you're ready to return it. All right, so now I'm ready to wash out the bulb syringe. There are a couple of tips I can give you. Number one is put a little water dish down in the bottom of the sink. The water dish will collect the water and make this easy. So as I begin, I'm going to put the bulb syringe in And I'm going to suck the water up several times to get most of the glaze out. I'm gonna run a little bit of that through the tip. Now I'm going to fill this up again. I'm gonna give it a good shake. And then I'm going to run a full thing of water through it. Now, really, it takes you less than a minute to clean it if you're doing it right. Uh, use the container, it helps a lot. Now, at the very end, we're gonna check to make sure that this is clean. Anytime you're returning a bulb syringe to the box, um, I'm gonna have you come over and do this with me. If you just hold your hand out, or I hold my hand out, and we kind of uh, just push some water on the back of my hand, I'm double checking to make sure it's absolutely clear that it has no glaze in it, and this is, this is clean and ready to go. Now, if you're ready to put another glaze in it, do make sure that you get all that water out so you don't uh, inadvertently have a bunch of water in there and make your next glaze watery. And I'm ready to switch colors. You could actually write in pencil on your plate what colors you want where. Um, uh, that way you don't forget and mess it up. It's especially nice if you have a pattern and you need to make sure that the pattern is coming out uh, evenly at the end. All right, this next color is violet. 
use care with glazes that are quite runny. Um, sometimes when you just tip the bulb syringe without even squeezing, they can uh, start to flow out. And that, that works fine as long as you're uh, moving it around and not keeping it in one place. So this, this glaze today, this lapis is a little bit runnier and I'm just pushing it around. Now, the glazes should be very smooth in the jars, but occasionally you might get a small lump of something, just a little dry piece of glaze. If you ever have an issue where your bulb syringe has clogged, um, I keep some of the jumbo paper clips on hand. There are usually some in the bin where the bottles are, but you can kind of, um, kind of ream out the hole a little bit to remove a clog if you have an issue with that. The last area that I'm painting, the border, I am actually going to be using a paintbrush. Um, you can use a paintbrush on any area that you want. You just have to make sure that you're using three coats. The advantage of the bulb syringe is it only takes one coat of application for the bulb syringe. Now, I recommend that if you're using a paintbrush, that you're using it maybe in large areas where it's really easy to go right up to the line. Um, if you're using it in small areas, it's going to be a lot more uh, tedious of an application to get your three coats on and not really mess it up. Don't be surprised if you find that the glazes dry almost immediately when you put them on. The nature of bisqueware is that it's absorbing the glaze. It's absorbing the water and so it will start to dry. All right. Now, I do want to make sure that the rim of this looks even with application. I could either sponge it off entirely or perhaps I could glaze the back or the, the very edge of it to get it a little bit cleaner in look. Um, we're, we're not going to be glazing the back of these plates. It is possible to glaze the back rim, but then it requires creating a patty that goes underneath it. and. Uh, I'd rather avoid that for the firing of these because they're very low to the shelf. All right, so I'm just touching up this rim. Okay, now that I have the rim glazed, I'm just going to tidy up the back edge and make it look neat and uniform so I don't have errant brush marks. Now that all the glaze has been applied to the surface, it's applied to the edge, I did clean up the back. I'm now going to go through and take a needle tool and chip away any glaze which I got into any of the grooves accidentally. Airborne glaze dust is every bit as dangerous as airborne clay dust, so I'm not going to just blow this off. If I blow it, it's gonna go airborne. Um, I don't want to get it on the floor, so first of all, I'm just going to tip it over on the table, or you could do that over a trash can if you want. And then I'm going to take a dry brush and gently brush out the grooves to see if there's any more that's still stuck in there. And if I see it, I'm just gonna go back over it a little bit more. The black should still stay visible in the groove. If there's a little bit of dust, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little bit of powdery dust that's over the black, I'm not terribly concerned about that. That, that little bit of dust will uh, not amount to any color. Again, just don't blow it right across the plate and into the air um, because then we're breathing it in and that's not good with the silica. And lastly, just give it a look over. If you see something that you did miss entirely, like I missed a tiny little point on part of this wing, I'm just going to touch it up with a little brush. Once you've completed your glazing, then you're going to be filling out a kiln ticket and placing it with your pot in the drying cabinet so I can get it fired. Go ahead and fill out your name, the bell that I have you, the date, the project, type of clay. Hopefully you remember this is stoneware. The glaze numbers or names. So if I'm using, say, the um, coyote glazes, I would just write alabaster satin. That indicates the, uh, the color. Um, they don't, the Coyote brand, they don't have corresponding numbers. If you use any other 
uh, brands, they sometimes have a, a corresponding number. Like if you use Moroccan sand robin's egg, it's MS18. So you could just write that down. Um, and then it says, what are the cones on the glaze labels? It will always tell you what the cone is. So like coyotes are cone six. The other ones, the Emicos and the uh, Laguna Moroccan Sands, they're cone five. And it's fine to use them together because I will fire it to cone five and a half, really. Um, and then it asks, has the pot bottom and the bottom corners been wiped clean? So on the case of the plates, you're just making sure that it's completely sponged off, no glaze at all. If you have little glaze spots on there, I can't fire it because it will get on my kiln shelf. Um, is the glazed dinnerware safe? And of course, I did mention that it's identified if it's not safe. And then the last thing where it says a stoneware patty, three quarters of an inch bigger all around, thin like a tortilla. You won't need a patty for this because we're not glazing the backside. Just keep the glaze off the back of the rim and we'll be fine. If you do glaze the back of the rim, you'll have to make a patty. And I have a separate video on that. I'll link in the video description.